He found an abandoned tower in the middle of Ohio, but making it his home took more than just hard work. Nothing in here is square, straight, plumb, or level. I had to brush up my math skills. Our journey to discover daring home designs is moving to the Midwest. In Lorain, Ohio, not far from Lake Erie, is an old windmill that stands 76 feet tall. It was intended to be the tallest tower windmill in the world, but construction was never finished until Tom Phillips happened by some 60 years later. Originally, the house on the corner was for sale, and it's a really neat house, but I said, what's that back in the field? And they said, oh, that's just an old windmill. I said, it is, huh? I, a windmill. Although the building was in shambles, Tom quickly fell in love with the possibilities and purchased the property. Over the next nine years, he would work on converting the five-story mill into a two-bedroom, four-bath home. Originally, the restoration was going to be very basic, just uh, two floors to live on and the rest of it wasted space. But as I started working on it, I had more and more delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Prior to his purchase, the windmill was condemned and the city ordered the roof be removed to avoid demolishing the entire structure. The top two floors were exposed and filled with debris. As Tom slowly and methodically removed the interior wreckage, he ran into another heavy problem. When we got to the fourth floor, we found that there was a millstone up there, which is giant. They're about a foot and a half thick and about six feet across, and it was a hazard, so we had to stop work and bring a crane in to pick that out. Tom hoped to keep much of the original structure, but since the building was not built as a residence, some added steps for safety were needed. The stairs in the building originally were uh, concrete casts like so, and they're only a, about two and a half feet wide, and the walls, of course, tip in, and there was no handrails. So what we did to make the stairs more usable, we went from two and a half feet to four feet, and each one of them are cantilevered out. With the newly constructed staircases, the windmill began to transform into the house Tom imagined. But the challenges caused by the mill's shape became a vicious circle. Nothing in here is square, straight, plumb, or level. When it was time to put the floor joists in, we immediately realized that every floor joist was a different length with a compound angle on both ends, and no two had the same angles. I had to brush up my math skills. He also got crunched by some odd numbers when he attempted to handcraft 23 round windows to fit the original frames. I measured three and they were the same, so I assumed, foolishly, that they were all the same. So I made all my windows the same size and found that there are actually anywhere from 22 inches to 24 and 3 quarters. Then I had to go back and remake a lot of the windows so that they would fit the openings. The crown jewel of the windmill is the roof. Tom had it built off-site and then lifted into position. The roof is a carousel. The top of the walls of the building are like a little railroad track, and there's cast iron wheels that ride on that railroad track so that the roof can be turned to keep the blades oriented into the wind, whatever the wind direction may be. One of the home's most unique features is the custom dining table. The transparent top offers a clear view down to the first floor. Tom still plans on adding the sweeps that will finally complete this majestic windmill. But for now, unlike a lighthouse, he's never lonely living inside his tower. It's nice to have people come because everybody enjoys visiting. I like to have company, and because it's a cool house, when people are invited, they usually come. And that's the best part about this house.